Okay, welcome. In this video, we're going to go through the whole of the immune response from beginning to end, because I always say it is like a story that you've got to learn, but learn it in chunks. So we're going to chunk it up together. So the first stage in our immune response story is obviously phagocytosis. Now, this is part of your non-specific immune response because it doesn't matter what the pathogen is, the phagocytes are going to engulf and destroy it if it's got foreign antigens on its surface. So what happens in phagocytosis is that the phagocyte moves towards the pathogen. It's going to engulf the pathogen. And by the way, we have done a longer video on this before if you want even more detail on just this stage. We've done one of these previously, but it's going to engulf the pathogen. So it's going to wrap its cell surface membrane around the pathogen and enclose it in a vesicle, which we can call a phagosome. And then lysosomes fuse with the phagosome. And release their hydrolytic enzymes. This digests the pathogen or hydrolyzes the pathogen. And then the phagocyte itself becomes an antigen presenting cell. Okay, so I'm going to draw my phagocyte here. It's engulfed and destroyed the pathogen, enclosed it in the phagosome, hydrolytic enzymes have digested it. It's now going to present the foreign antigens on its cell surface membrane. This is what we call a phagocyte acting as an antigen presenting cell. Now, the presentation of these antigens is going to then stimulate our specific immune response. So this is the next part of the story which is the T lymphocyte response, also known as the cellular response. And the reason it's known as the cellular response is T lymphocytes respond to your own body cells that are presenting the foreign antigen. So it might be a phagocyte that's presenting the foreign antigen, or maybe a body cell that's infected with a virus that is presenting the foreign antigen. But the T lymphocytes are going to respond to your body cells acting as antigen presenting cells. So in the cellular response, the T lymphocyte or the T cell with receptors on its cell surface membrane that are complementary to that antigen are going to bind to the foreign antigen that's being presented by the antigen presenting cell. And once that happens, it's going to activate the T cell. So the T lymphocyte or the T cell is stimulated or activated. It undergoes clonal expansion. Now, you might have heard that word, you might not have, but when it binds to the foreign antigen, we say it's been selected. So that's called clonal selection. It's almost like we're saying, this is the one we need. This is the one with the correct specific receptors. We're going to select it. So that would be clonal selection. Then it undergoes clonal expansion, which basically means it's going to divide by mitosis or produce many clones of itself. Those clone T cells are then going to differentiate yeah, or specialize into uh, cytotoxic T cells or killer T cells, as we can call them. Uh, memory T cells and helper T cells. There's also another type called uh, the regulatory T cell. But if you're doing AQA, you don't need to know about that one. But the regulatory T cell is basically involved in um, stopping the immune response once the pathogen has been destroyed. Okay, so we've got cytotoxic T cells, memory T cells, and helper T cells. Now, the cytotoxic T cells can destroy pathogens. They can produce chemicals. An example of one of those chemicals would be uh, perforins. Perforins, for example, can damage the bacterial cell walls. They can make holes in the bacterial cell walls. So loads of water enters um, by osmosis and they are destroyed. Memory T cells give long-term immunity because they remain in circulation. And the helper T cells are going to link us 
to the third part of our story. Now, the third part of our story involves the B lymphocytes, the B cell response, which is known as the humoral response. The reason it's known as the humoral response is because B cells called plasma cells make antibodies and antibodies travel in our blood, which is an example of a bodily fluid. And an old fashioned word for that, I suppose, was humor. So it's called the humoral response. But the way this works is a B cell, if I draw a B cell here. So B cells are going to bind to the antigen. And again, this is specific, right? Because B cells, it's not just any old B cell. It's the B cell that has the receptors that are specifically complementary to this particular antigen, foreign antigen. So B cells with specific receptors on their cell surface membrane are going to bind to the foreign antigen, which might be on the pathogen itself, or it might be on an antigen presenting cell. The B cell is then going to engulf the pathogen and it can become an antigen presenting cell. So B cells themselves can present the foreign antigens. The T cells, the helper T cells, need to activate the B cells. So it's like a two-step activation process, I suppose, for the B cell. Not only does it need to actually bind to the foreign antigen, so we're making sure we've got the correct B cell being selected, but it also needs to be activated by a T helper cell. So once the B cell presents the foreign antigens, the T helper cell with the correct complementary receptors will bind to the presented antigen and that's going to activate our B cell. Once the B cell has been activated or undergone clonal selection, uh, then, then it's going to undergo clonal expansion, just like the T cell. So clonal selection or B cell activated by the T helper cell, then clonal expansion, or we can just say it clones itself by mitosis or produces many clones. Then the B cells are going to differentiate into, and we've got two types of cell we need to know here. We've got the memory B cells and the plasma cells which are probably the most important in terms of the exam because they always want you to get to the plasma cells. They're the ones that make the antibodies. But the memory B cells, if we just talk about those briefly, they will remain in circulation. And if you are um, infected with the same pathogen or your immune system comes across that same antigen, the memory B cells will be able to quickly differentiate into plasma cells and produce antibodies. So what you'll see in your secondary immune response is the rapid production of antibodies and the higher concentration of antibodies with very little lag time or very little delay before their production. So that's why we say the memory cells give us long-term immunity. The plasma cells, really important, they produce antibodies. And the antibodies they produce are the same as the antibodies that were acting as receptors on the cell surface membrane. So those antibodies will be complementary to the same foreign antigen. They'll be able to bind to it using their antigen binding sites. And um, they'll be able to clump pathogens together in the process that we call agglutination. They'll be able to act as opsonins or markers to almost tag the pathogens to attract more phagocytes over. So all in all, it's a very complex story. And this is actually pretty simple. I have simplified it, um, but I've tried to do it at the level that you need for A-level biology. And um, there is more to it in reality. There's a lot of chemical signaling going on as well, for example. But I've tried to keep it to key knowledge for A-level biology that will make sure you've got enough to get the marks without learning loads of like extra, even more complicated stuff. It's hard enough as it is. As I said at the start, when I teach this, when I learned this, I think of it as a story. I think of it as three parts or three chapters. So I chunk it into non-specific phagocytosis, which ends with the antigen presenting cell, then the cellular or the T lymphocyte response, 
where, where the T lymphocytes bind to the antigens on the antigen presenting cell, but that will end with the production of helper T cells, importantly, because then I can chunk into my third part of the story, the humoral response or the B lymphocyte response where the helper T cells activate the specific B cell. And that story ends with the production of plasma cells and the secretion of antibodies. I hope you found that useful, guys. And um, we're going to be posting some more stuff on YouTube this week. Um, on this topic, I think we're going to do a little multiple choice quiz if you want to come back later in the week and check that out. So make sure you are subscribed and your notifications are switched on so you don't miss anything that could help you with your A-level biology.